God's good, ain't he? I'll be y'all. We do thank you for all things. We do humbly ask and request in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach, the Messiah, our King. We need your spirit of truth to rule out open our understanding here. Please bring an impact in our hearts to give us an understanding of the times that we're in. Uh, we will bless you for all things live for you, and sinners will be converted in the magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe see this real. Our scriptures teach us, and it tells us that uh, the people who've gone on before us was a lot wiser, ten times wiser, than the astrologers, the soothsayers, the wizards, the musicians, anyone who comes before us. And that's because of the spirit of Yah. That dwells in us. You understand? Um, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. We had a uh, wonderful time of fellowship the South Carolina and North Carolina Saints um, that, that came. Um, they're doing well. Elder Austin, being um, the young man that he is, that he is, is doing a, a magnificent job. Um, it's a heavy, heavy weight, heavy, heavy task to throw someone like that in a position of leadership at such a young age. Most people would never understand it because they've never been in those positions. You understand what I mean? And, um, and, and of course, you know, he receives his share of the tax as well. You understand what I mean? What y'all need to understand, are y'all listening to me? What, what y'all need to understand is anytime anyone in any positions to where they are out front leading and teaching and guiding, and anytime they get attacked, it's all because of envy and jealousy. Because the people that are doing it, they can't do it. They can't lead you. They can't be an example and live for you. Y'all didn't give them the spirit for you to listen to and follow. That's just the truth. They don't have the words of eternal life that will encourage and save your soul. So it seems like there's nothing new under the sun. We're dealing with the same things again and again, you know. Uh, repeating the same things. Always oh, good to see y'all again. Um, and of course, uh, Brother Al and his family, he's doing a magnificent job down there. Um, and it's just a wonderful thing. It does my heart good because to see someone who can sit down on the other side of that camera and listen to what I'm saying, and not only just be watches, hearers, but doers. Because, brother, I, man, I wish you just wouldn't call my name. It's too late now. You understand? I mean, I respect him because he, he doesn't want, you know, any videos of him out there. And that's no big deal. That's fine. Um, so I just keep talking about it. The Bible says don't let your own lips praise you, but let another man praise you anyway, don't it? Isn't that true? Um, and, and, and I tell you, you know, it, it's something to be said for someone that comes from the type of lifestyle that they're used to living. You know, his mother owned a business. She sold a business. Um, when, I, when I say that he had a house on the golf course, you anybody know what that means? Most people don't know what that means. They, they, they don't know what that means, brother. You know what I mean? They think a house on a golf course is some sand castle that some child on built or something like that. But they, he sold that in order to do what he's doing now. Says to me, Pastor, I never had peace like this before in my life. But I also never have worked as hard. See the contrast? I said, and of course, I said, you don't say. That's one hallmark of an Israelite. Hard worker. You can't be lazy and putting soils on your ass and be an Israelite. Did I say something wrong? The word says he's going to bless the labor of your hands. Isn't that right? That's what the word says. And he's definitely doing it too. 
You know, I received some very, you know, I mean, it's heavy. I received some heavy message, a heavy message, excuse me, from uh, Pastor Corey. And I feel sorry for him because, you know, Ben, most people don't understand a pastor's heart. You understand what I mean? And um, I, I really do feel for him. You know, there's, um, they've never been here, but they've been coming faithfully out there. They've been on a few pictures. And he had somebody in the assembly come to him and say, I want y'all to listen to me. He had somebody in the assembly come to him and say, um, you know, Pastor, I, I just can't do this. It's entirely too hard. I love tradition. I'm going I'm to have to celebrate. I'm going to have to get out here and I, I, I got to do Christmas. Are y'all hearing this? I, I've got to do Christmas. He said, but whoever it was, I'm just using he, you know, in a generic form, okay? Um, he says, uh, but if it's all right, I'd like to have my children to be able to still come over and play with yours. Of course, my answer is not a no, but a hell no. And, of course, people would call me hard, callous, cold, cruel, insensitive. Make up a superb. Let me make one fit, all right? But you don't understand that when you make a, a decision like that, you are choosing Baal worship. We have been so immersed in this culture right here. Are you following me? That, that, come here, Titus. Come here, Titus. Stand right here. That, that rubbing shoulders with the heathens and the pagans and the Gentiles has become norm. Thank you, sir. It don't even phase us. And as much as we hear this word over and over and over again, still hasn't had an impact on us because we lust after them. We envy the oppressor. And it ain't until these words or this, this scripture is spoken and told the right way that the conviction of the Holy Spirit begins to prick our hearts. You understand? Yes, sir. And, um, but that's what they've done. When they said it, they made a choice. And then they're going to bell worship. And uh, anyway, y'all going to enjoy this. I, I told we're going to be back in Jose, okay? And so I told uh, Pastor Corey, I got a saying for him. Goodbye, good riddance, and so the hell on. And you have to understand, this is a this generation is more wicked than all the generations that ever come before it because we've had so much information and we've had so much ease placed right at our fingertips. And of course, what does the prophet say? Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. And what do we want to do? Always be at ease. Isn't that right? Leisure, luxury. No inconvenience whatsoever at all. And I don't mind telling you that, you know, uh, Brother Al and his family down there, including his mother, carrying cinder blocks, almost 60 years old to help get that place done, doing raised beds, putting tin up on buildings. Are you following? But I also don't mind telling you um, that he, he's a no-nonsense man, too. You come down and he can see your work ethic. It ain't worth two dead flies. He don't want you back there no more. You got a very low tolerance for laziness. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to be in the book of Hosea. All right. Remember, I, we, we did kind of like an open summary. And, and, and um, you know, the sentiment was is <laughs> when I was in South Carolina and then Georgia, uh, and I, he I hear y'all. I do hear y'all, all right, because I, I don't hear these people here, but I hear y'all, all right. And um, they said, Pastor, it is not the fact of the matter that the, wor the word is beautiful and wonderful. You just give us too much. It's just way too much. One of them said, we're still in August. We listen to every message, but we're still in August. I said, I'll tell you what you do. 
go ahead and start today. All right, and I'll make a few changes. One thing I did is I made the font a whole lot bigger. Instead of just trying to cram one spit, you know, scripture on, on the screen, I divided it up so they could see it. You understand know what I mean? And so I listen to the people who are out there who are hungry for the truth. You understand? But, but we'll, we'll, we'll back off just a little bit, but we ain't slowing down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've already wasted enough time. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and many of you out there, you got to understand a lot of people, they don't even care to catch up. They go from week to week and they know more than I do. But I can go and ask them what I preached about and stuff, they can't give me an answer. That throws me. Don't that throw you? Hallelujah. Somebody said, uh, they saw something on my website a long, long time ago where I said, well, we would never, ever, ever agree to this. All right? That's what he said, right? And I did say that. And there's many things. How many times have you ever said something in your life, you ain't going to never agree to that or do that? Then come later on when more light is presented to you, what did you do? Let me, let me break it down in layman's terms, okay? You humbled your prideful self. And instead of eating crow, you ate humble pie. And you said, nevertheless, not my will, but be done. Well, isn't that something? Well, I can admit that. And after all, at the end of the day, we're just a presenter of truth, a presenter of information. And the Most High Yah, disclaimer, has the right to add or adjust this teaching as we go forth, as he see fit to give us more knowledge, more wisdom, and understanding. We're not to be all in all. We're, and never forget, we are looking through a glass darkly. But when that which is perfect is come, we're going to know it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go ahead and, and, and get started here. All right. Okay, come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Now, I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again. I need to ask, are you listening, though? You read through this. When the history of our people, when they were making history, throughout all these different captivities, all right, and let's, let us not forget the mercy of Yah, his long suffering before he decided to pull the plug on Israel. We need to talk about his mercy. All right? The history of our people. The warning was don't go over and associate with these people. Do not marry your sons and their, their, to their daughters and your daughters to their sons. When you go into the land, you destroy their idols. You tear down their groves. <laughs> Are y'all listening to this? Are you following me? Now, did our people do that? No, they did not obey that instruction because if they obeyed that instruction, we would not be in the condition we're in today. And neither will we have all these prophets continue to keep prophesying against Israel. And that's something. The, the message then was don't go into these people. Don't associate with these people. Do not meddle with these people. Do not entangle and snare yourself with these people. Is that right? right. Well, now we're at the end of this thing. Now it's saying come out from among these people. Yeah. Come out of her. And either way it goes, whether it's in or out, y'all are still dealing with the same difficulty of his hard-headed, stubborn, stupid people. Yeah. He's not telling us don't go into it because we're already immersed. We're swimming. Just like a duck take the water. Now it's come out. Come out. Come out. And we still don't hear the message. It's amazing, isn't it? All right. Hosea, prophetic book, and Isaiah, we're going to actually hit both of them today because both of them pretty much prophesied during the same time period. And we're going to switch back and forth from the King James and the scriptures, okay? And the reason being is because in, in, when you are going over some of these passages of scripture right here, the actual scriptures make more sense than trying to um, fuse this Western mindset into a, an Eastern mind. And y'all got to understand something, you know, I hate this culture with every fiber of my being. I hate 
and despise the religion of Christianity with every fiber of my being. Am I making any sense? So you're not going, going to have any good league with me when I'm already against this thing in the first place. Does that make any sense? So your Christian philosophy and doctrine is not, is not going to have any effect on me. Hallelujah. All right, the word of Yahweh that came to Hoshi, the son of Biri, in the days of Uzziah, Joktan, Azad, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Pay attention. Uzziah, Joktan, Uzziah, Uzziah, Hezekiah, the what? Kings of Judah. Now notice, these kings' names are listed. All right, but when we go to the next one, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. All right, now notice, all these kings are not mentioned. Are you following me? The kings of the northern tribes of Israel, okay? And there's a reason for it, all right? Hosea is prophesying to the northern tribes of Israel, and also at this time, Isaiah is prophesying to the southern kingdom of Judah. You had this thing going on simultaneously, okay? All right, let's pay attention. Now, Jeroboam is at the end of his reign, and Hosea does not name any of the kings of the house of Israel because they are full of iniquity. Remember, they started going off with Jeroboam. Ten tribes did. Hoshi, one, two. The beginning of the word of Yahweh, which Hoshi and Yahweh said to Hoshi, look what he says, go and take yourselves a woman of horn and children of horn, for the land has utterly whored away from Yahweh. They just ran away from him. Now, the actual physical land where you put your feet is not what he's talking about. He's talking about the people, okay? Yahweh's drawing an analogy here, all right? And he's using examples. He uses examples all the time and pictures and prophets to show us our condition as a people, all right? So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Dabalim, which conceived and bare him a son. And Yahweh said unto him, look at this, call, now anytime somebody gets a name in Israel, it's not like we do today, make up a name and it sounds good, has no meaning. And a lot of times you can be cursing your children. And so they turn out acting like devils, you probably need to check the name you gave them. Who knows what drug or what influence or that you was under when you gave them a name. Who knows, I don't know. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Instead of just making up stuff, you understand what I mean? Anyway, and Yahweh said unto him, call his name Jezreel. For yet in a little while, look at this, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel. Now check this out. Upon the house of who? Yehu. And will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Now, there was something going on with this Yehu cat, okay? This Yehu was a warrior of the warriors of the warriors. Are you following me? This man was a warrior. Are you getting me? A very zealous warrior. But yet and still he went past what the Most High had already put out. He already put out a law and an edict and stuff to don't go past and don't touch certain things. All right, you follow me? And this just happened to be of the house of Ahab. All right? And so anyway, Yehu became the king of Israel and he took it by force. And Yehu told the elders of the city, I want you to pick out one of Ahab's sons and let him face me. So we go to the precept. 2 Kings 10.1 And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel and to the elders and to them that bought up Ahab's children saying Now as soon as this letter come to you seeing your master's sons are with you and they are with you chariots and horses a fenced city also and armor. All right? And, and let me stop and get a little bit of history right here, all right? We're getting ready to look at a, a serious purging. It's getting ready to take place right here, all right? Let me just go with that, all right? Look, even out of the best 
and meters of your master's sons and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. In other words, you pick one of these sons and let him fight for Ahab's house. Now, mind you, King Ahab has 70 sons. And I'll say again, you're not going to get 70 sons out of one woman. Melaking, big, 10-3, that's still second kings. Choose the best and most upright of your master's sons and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. Sound like yeah, he was picking a fight, don't he? Huh? But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him. How then shall we stand? In other words, we've heard of the tenaciousness of this man. He's already done annihilated two kings and what are we? How are we going to stand before this man right here? All right? Verse 5. And he who was over the house, and he who was over the city, the elders also in the gardens sent Yehu, saying, We are your servants. See, when you're getting ready to go to war, or somebody's getting ready to go to war with you, and you know that this, this man can overpower you by his military might and power, whatever it may be, First thing you need to do is find out what's going on and seek some conditions of peace. Are y'all listening to me? No, it ain't time to, yeah, you're right. It ain't time to flex your muscles when you're about ready to get beat down. People had sense back then. So they are humbling themselves. This is Israel, the house of Israel. They're humbling themselves. And look what he says. We do not set up anyone to reign. Do what is good in your eyes. That's some serious humility. And he wrote a second letter to them saying, if you are for me. That's amazing, isn't it? Look at this to the words. If you are what? For me. <clears throat> and if you obey my voice, take the head of the men your master's sons. Y'all hearing that? In other words, I want you to chop off all 70 heads of the sons of Ahab. And come and meet me at Jezreel, Jezreel, by this time tomorrow. Now the sovereign's sons, 70 beings, 70 beings were with the great men of the city who bought them up. And it came to be, when the letter came to them, that they took the sovereign sons and slaughtered them. That's some serious fear. These men are in authority. Seventy men. And put their heads in baskets and sent them to him at Yezreel. So, Yehu killed seventy sons of Ahel and all the prophets of Baal. All this is written about because Jeroboam and his reign was going to go up to the fourth generation. And that's why these, these things are fusing together between <clears throat> Hezekiah, which we'll get to a little bit here. But you have Isaiah that's going to be prophesying to the southern kingdom. And you have this prophet right here prophesying to the northern kingdom. All right, so watch this. So Jose was the name of, his, of the son of his firstborn was Jezreel. Yahweh was going to take vengeance upon Yehu for this mighty slaughter that was taking place. Because he and Yahweh didn't give him direction to tell him to go do this thing. All right? So in Hosea 1 4, Yahweh said unto him, Call, this is Hosea, his son, you call your son's name Jezreel, for yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Yehu, and I will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Y'all say, I'm getting ready to cause this whole thing to stop. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. All right? Listen to that very closely. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And Yahweh said unto him, call her lo ro For I will no more have mercy. That's a bad sign. That's bad. Upon the house of who? He's no more going to have mercy on the house of, but I will utterly take them away. Now, Israel's not innocent. 
because Israel's in the same condition that we are in today. We're full of idolatry. Every man doing that which is right in his own eyes. Huh? We don't want to submit to Yah's laws. We love the laws and the, the laws of the heathen. We're more afraid of the heathen than we are Yah. Is that not our condition today? There's no fear of Torah. There's no fear of the Most High at all in this land. There's more fear when you drive down the road that you see red and blue lights behind you than there is of Yah. And this is the same condition we find ourselves in today. These people was given over to idolatry. They worshipped every being that there was, every mighty one that there was, Israel worshipped it. You know why? Because those mighty ones let them do what they wanted to do. But if you're an Israelite, you've got laws. You are under authority. We're not here to do our will. Y'all understand this? And so back then, while they was worshiping idols and sacrificing children and eating things, strangled the blood and all this other stuff, look at what we're doing today. The exact same thing. It's a mess, isn't it? Except today we dress it up. Ah, Christmas ain't that bad. Easter ain't that bad. Sunday ain't that bad. Just because you insulate yourself and pacify yourself and dress it up doesn't mean that it's not bad. It's still bad. Hallelujah. All right. So, hey, he said, I am no more going to have mercy. That means the Father is finished. I'm going to contrast this and show you how that even still till today that the Father, when he's dealing with his house, instead of, I'm going to show you how he's not having mercy on those who transgress against him. Israel, oh, let me finish, but I will utterly take them away. Israel, we need to understand we are only here today because of Yahweh's mercy. And we forget that. We, we forget that we're not here under our own power. We're one breath from eternity. When Yahweh said he is not going to have any more mercy upon us, it's a very sad day. Because he's not going back on his word. That means that Israel had frustrated the father so much that he says no hope for these people right here. I'm finished. I'm done for. Done with it. And this is why I am returning back to the old ancient paths. Only a few of you are going to hear this message and believe today. Be it here or there. Only a few is going to hear the sound of the trumpet only a few it's not going to be many never has been the rest of our people are gone too far into this world you can see it in them you can see their concerns they're just, just too far into the world Revelation 18 4 says and I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that you be not a partaker of her sins and that you receive not of her what? Her plagues. Coming out is more than just physically moving geographical locations. The biggest coming out, that's, yes sir, that's right brother Scott, the biggest coming out is right here. The thing you don't want to do. And you know what's sad? Is I know when you are not out. But people today are so dumb and stupid they think people can't discern when people are still in, why are they trying to act like they're out? We ain't stupid. Just because we don't say something to you at particular times don't mean that we're not watching you and we don't know. The ideal is you're supposed to hear, listen, understand, go forward with obedience so that you can be delivered. Is that making sense? All right. So that you don't receive her plagues. Now, I'm shouting. Come out of her, my people. And I've been screaming for a long, long time. It's almost one of my favorite sayings. I don't know how any else, to, I don't know how else to say it. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you everything to do to come out. Everything to do to come out. You know, I'll talk about this just for a brief moment of what I talked about in South Carolina, talking about citizenship. <clears throat> and we don't understand you know, Christianity spoiled us. And, and we believe that if we say a few words, we have salvation. But 
The steps to salvation is clearly laid out when Jesus was dealing with the rich young ruler. He came to, to Christ and said, what must I do to be saved? He didn't tell you, well, repent and, and say three things like this. You need to repent. Are you following me? But he didn't say, do you believe, do you believe, do you believe? You're going to show what you believe by your walk of obedience. Your steps of obedience. He said, keep the commandments. Wow. Well, since sin is a transgression of the law and Christianity says it's done away with, how can you keep the law then? If you follow that line of thinking. Keep the command. Which? But let me get to the end of it. This is, see, this is what citizenship in the kingdom of heaven gets you when your heart gets right. All right? You know what it gets you? It gets you houses this time. Lands in this time. Brethren this time. Sisters this time. Wives this time. And then not only that, you get to be rulers in the kingdom to come. That's not a bad deal. That's not a bad trade off for this life. You mean to tell me all I got to do is keep the commandments, obey the Father, and I get to experience the blessings of the Most High right now? Yeah. Whoo, boy, that's good citizenship. I like that. Now, you people of Mexican descent don't think that I'm being disparaging or I'm, I'm saying uh, words to try to bring down your people because I'm not. I want you to listen to something, okay? There's a reason why the Mexicans always are trying to breach the border of the United States of America. They do it because life over here is better than over there. Life is so much better over here than over there, they are willing to get shot at and, be, and die if necessary by the border patrol. They're willing to risk their lives swimming across a river and die. They're willing to risk everything that it takes in this life just to get over here and to become a citizen of America. We go from darkness, the kingdom of Satan, over to Yah, the kingdom of light, and we don't want to risk nothing. And we are citizens of the best kingdom here and now and the world to come. We have dominion, rulership, the whole nine y'all. See, the, the gospel message or the message of salvation hadn't been preached right. right. No wonder people don't want to serve the Father. Right. Now look at this. Let's go to see what Jesus is saying. He's basically saying, if you come and follow me, if you come and serve me, I'm going to give you houses, I'm going to give you lands, I'm going to give you brothers, I'm going to give you sisters, I'm going to give you wives, I'm going to give you children, I'm going to give you everything you want right now, here and now, and then in the world to come, eternal life and rulership and dominion. That ain't a bad trade-off. You get to leave death, hell, and the devil, because we all were citizens of Satan. The problem is, it's just like that man had to be willing to forsake all. Most of us got too much. You see, when the Mexican come over here, he's willing to forsake all. So much all that he's willing to die. Well, well, well. You think that they understand citizenship? Because they could get over here and do the thing you spoiled Americans won't do. They'll go out there in that tobacco field, make $100, $200 a day, stack up in one trailer like sardines for two or three years, amass all that money, and all of a sudden, you going to Guadalajara. They got a business going that they have paid for because of the sacrifice that they're willing to make, and none of them are in the fields no more because they understand the benefits of citizenship. They know what it means to sacrifice. You want everything handed to you and given to you, you lazy bum. It's amazing we have all these examples, even Joseph, one of the best examples that there is in the Bible when it comes to a labor of love. 
the Messiah as well. And, and yet and still, these go right over our heads. Jesus said, unless a man forsake all that he has, he can in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. And what are you willing to forsake? One thing you can't forsake is your will. See, these people live in such deplorable conditions. I've been to third world countries. I know what th deplorable conditions are. These people are willing to forsake all because what have they got anyway? In order to inherit the kingdom. You ain't going to tell me they don't have the kingdom here and now by the time they get to America. They drive nice cars. They are clean cut when you go to the restaurants and you watch it. Yes, they are. They're very cordial, respectable. Huh? They don't walk around like you Americans do, prideful with your nose stuck up in the air. They're proud to be a citizen. And you mean to tell me that after leaving the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness, coming over to the kingdom of light, that we can't show our gratitude? That was just some of the message I was preaching down in South Carolina this about. Citizenship, as American Express says, or membership, has its privileges. Uh-oh. I think I missed the first part. These people are willing to die in order to become a citizen. What do you have to do to get in this kingdom? You got to die. <laughs> you gotta die uh, most of you try to stay alive you gotta die to yourself die to your will yeah you don't but what do you want to do you want to hold on to it because that's all you got and all you got is nothing mm -mm -mm. oh hallelujah come out of her, my people And lo, Ramula, Ramula, means no mercy. Israel has pushed Yahweh too far with her iniquity and transgression. All right? Soon afterwards, the Assyrian destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel. And then they decided they were going to take their armies and march on down to Judah. I mean, after all, we got the northern kingdom. That's ten tribes right there. Let's get on down here to Judah. I mean, because, hey, what's the real problem we have today? Whoever you want to be like is the people, uh, is the people and nation uh, that Yahweh will raise up to destroy you. See, you want to be like Americans while trying to play Israelite. And you're being destroyed. <laughs> and you think you're, you're getting by on the king, and that's why you still oppress and depress and obsess. Because you cannot serve two masters. You can't straddle the fence in this thing. And see, Israel's problem was that every time they looked out, they wanted to be like the nations. And y'all said, okay, I will have no more mercy on you. I'm finished with you. So guess what? The nation you want to be like is the nation I'm going to raise up to whoop your ass. How you like the Gentiles, the heathens, and the pagans now? Of course, what we always do when we get into captivity. Murmur, bawl, squall, gripe and complain, cry out when it gets a little too hard. Why win? Why win? And you forgot all about your condition before you got there. Your condition got you there. Is this making sense, Israel? You see, if it's what these are not fairy tales. We need to take these things to heart. These are real, this is real life right here. And we need to apply these things to us here and now. We need to learn. And not be a fool and repeat the mistakes of the past. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, the renewed covenant said there used to be a time that Yah would wink and be as ignorant. But now he commands every man everywhere to repent. That's what he commands now. So check this out. The message then was do not associate yourselves with the strange people of the land. Was that the message, Israel? Anybody that was a stranger of the lands could become part of Israel, but we, they could become part of us, but we had laws. We can't go and be a part of them. 
Why? What's the proof? There's one in Ezra 9, 12. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever. Well, we got a few wise men in Israel that thought that they could trump y'all's word. Samson. Samson had a love for the pagan Gentile heathen women. Got his eyes put out, didn't he? Huh? And, and then he had to die for fooling around with the other nations. Look what Solomon, wisest man ever lived, look what he got him. But we could, we're better than him. And you folks, just, and you people out there that are deceived by skin color and stuff, just because somebody got black on their ass and stuff don't mean that you know Israel ain't that part of us. This thing has been mixed to the uttermost. You're only going to know people by the spirit. That's it. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do y'all see what we're up against and what has happened to us? See, these instructions, don't do this. Now, hey, Samson didn't want to listen to the instructions of his father and mother because, why? He had his own ideas. He's going to trump Torah. He's going to trump Tanakh. He's going to trump scriptures. And look, even those strong, wise men who we don't have the testimony of some of the feats that they had, even them, it got them killed for transgressing the law. We can't be going out rubbing elbows, shooting the breeze and kicking it with the heathens of this world. Huh? That you may be strong. That's the reason why you don't give your sons and your daughters to them. So you may be strong. See, we're in captivity now. What does our sons and daughters do as soon as they get old enough? Huh? When they don't have the spirit in them. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as they get old enough, what do they do? They, they, they take the authority of the captivity that we're in to go, which we was back in our land Huh? 30 stripes save one. We're good. We'll beat you one day 39 times, then we'll get you again the next day. We'll put the evil away from us somehow. Why? Because people like that give other people ideals. You did it, now we can go do it and look how many people are on their way to hell. On their way to literal hell because they thought that they could do what everybody else did. And ain't none of these people got a testimony that you want to follow out and live out. Can't none of them show you what righteousness and holiness is. None of them have a life that you don't want to follow in their steps. Do you, are you sure you want to follow them as they follow Christ? What commandments are they keeping? They have been in essence become Gentiles. And of course the pocket recall these wicked men went out of Israel and these same wicked men are the ones who try to come in and entice and influence you to go get a taste of heathenism and call it the blessings of Yah y'all hearing this that you may be strong and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever and the only way we're going to leave an inheritance today is coming by community common unity that's the only way it's going to come. Because this system got everybody figured out. They got everybody. Even if you got money, they got it figured out how to get it even when you, when you gone. Oh, they give a little bit back to your family. You get a little bit of kickback here. But you, the government, government, they going to be in your pockets. You ever heard of inheritance tax? What? Inheritance tax? But see, if you was wise like me, you don't have to worry about them getting an inheritance tax because you would buy sound money. They can't be taxed. Oh, I don't believe that. What do you, you already don't believe because you ain't living holy anyway. Uh, but you see what I'm saying? Because after we, you know, our, my generation work hard. After we work hard. And we build all these places, these homes, and, and then set up everything for the Israelite, this generation coming behind us. We got to teach them how to keep it. Because these children of the world are wiser than the children of light. We can't teach them, you know, if the only thing they know is the fear of y'all growing up and stuff, these, these Gentiles going to see these people, man, they gullible. 
Huh? I see an opportunity here. So we have to teach them wisdom. And who better to teach the children wisdom than an Israelite? After all, we taught the Egyptian senators wisdom. We could teach these senators some wisdom. This land ain't thinking about prospering for y'all. USA, under Satan's authority. Dabarine 2317. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Why, why are all these things given to us? They're given us there for a reason. So we don't bring no curses upon us. Hallelujah. The problem is mixing with the heathens and the pagans of the land. Our attitude is not right. Too much relaxing of y'all's laws. Too much. As it, it's, in, it's, it's in our fiber and being. That's why I say over and over and over again, how much time have you actually truly spent unlearning? You're so busy amassing knowledge, and the knowledge you got, you ain't got nothing. Too much compromising. Too much rationalizing. Too many excuses. Too many twistings of the truth. Think about this. I mean, I got a lot of enemies out there, right? Huh? And they chose to be my enemy. And I'm glad that they made themselves known. It's better than those you posing as my friend when you my enemy. At least I know who my enemies are. And there's not one of my enemies out there that could lead you in the way of salvation to the most high. Not a one of them can give you an inspiration, a lick of inspiration in how to serve the Father and be an example to do it. We had people like this in the Renewed Covenant too. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Y'all people not start thinking about this stuff now. Think about this. Associated fellowshipping with people who do not believe like we do. You can't be doing that. We are the ministers to the nations. Y'all hear that, Israel? We are the ministers to the nations. Not the nations ministering to us. We are here to minister to them. All right? You understand? It's not for them or anyone who will not come out of them to minister to us. Anybody outside of our camp ain't got nothing to say to us. Hallelujah. I mean, we would hear them, but what are you going to tell us if you ain't living set apart? If you're not obeying the scriptures, if you haven't even made moves to even do this, what do you have to tell me? No, sit down and shut up, humble yourself so that you can be taught. We should avoid them like the Baptist void the church of Christ. Now tell me that ain't the truth. But see, we'll, we'll, we'll take that though. We can put up with that. We can understand that and, 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 and have mercy for that. And never even talk about them for being that way. It's an accepted behavior. Nehemiah, look what happened. And the rest of the people, now we're, what's happening now, we're going, we're going down a little bit of ways over here, all right? We're going to go on down a little bit of ways and talk about how when Assyria started coming down to Judah, okay? And the rest of the people of the priests and the Levites, porters and singers and Nethlings and all that, and all they that had separated themselves. See, that's, don't tell me this is some foreign doctrine. This thing is from one end of the scripture to the next. All they had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto Yahweh, unto the law of Yahweh, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. So everybody don't have what? Knowledge and understanding. They clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse. That curse means he entered into an oath. All right? And into an oath uh, to walk in Yahweh's law, which was given by Moshe, the servant of Yahweh, and to observe to do all the commandments that Yahweh Elohim and his judgments and his statutes. And that we should, and that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land. We can do that when we're strong as a nation. It breaks my heart when I see our daughters going off. 
That's why I stay on you foolish ass women. The only way them dogs can go off is if you off. That's the only way they can go off. That's the only way they can go off. Man. Your ideas, your, your little tearing down of the, of the patriarchal rule. You expressing them your little sorry feelings and emotions you can't even make sense of. Rather than teaching them holiness and righteousness. You teach them how to slander, how to hate, how to despise. Uh huh. How to smite with the fist. Yeah, you do. That's how the daughters go off. And now we got a language today. You don't even have to communicate. You ever heard a sign? <sighs> <sighs> and you know how powerful we are now? Man, I, can under, I know you're good enough to know when you got a spirit that's heavy and down. Yes, sir. You communicate. Yes, sir. And in that communication, you, you're seeking whether you understand not to affect everybody around you. And if you got children that are close to you, guess you, you know they're going to feel it? The only thing they're going to think is, I got to come to the defense. What can I do? What can I pick up? What's disturbing? And you teach them to be like your sorry self. Subliminal messages. Words without force of breath. Through discernment. See, we're wise to do wicked. We're wise to be evil. It's the same. Mothers are the first line teachers. The fathers are the law. We're in captivity, and you can see, we don't have too many that stay in this thing after they hit that 18 mark. Most of them got Google eyes after they get finished looking at Beyonce shaking her ass. Watching Hollywood and they get all these ideas and images in their minds. I'm going to be like them. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a singer. And you can't even carry a damn, you singing the, the note of K. And you're going to sing. You're going to go out and get abused by the world. You're going to get swallowed up and ate up. And it'll be a wonder if you even live. There are children every day that's dropping off the face of planet Earth. Boys and girls. Never to be heard of again. And here you are, this dumb Israelite. Oh, you wise and supposed to know what y'all, but now you done got so wise you become dumb and you want to trump him and think you wiser than those people out there in that world. And they can't wait for your stupid self to get out there. They'll rip you apart. I ain't going to rip me apart. I haven't seen one show me how to do this yet. I would love to see one show me how to do this. But we just don't have it that way, do we? So be wise. But the edict is, don't you give your daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters to your sons. Why? Because the old adage is, they're going to turn your heart. If they can turn Solomon, they can turn you. And ain't nobody in here wiser than Solomon. Not all of us put together. And Solomon couldn't even handle it. That's the reason why the law is far above us all. And in those days I saw Jews, the Yehudis, this is Nehemiah, that had married wife of Ashdod, wives of Ashdod, and Ammon and Moab. You got the chief priests and princes of the people doing this transgression. And this is what Nehemiah says. And their children spake half the speech of Ishdod, Ashdod, and look at this, and could not speak in the Yehudis language, but according to the language of each people. I've been taken away from my land. I can't speak the language of my people. It's obvious that I'm not the same as these people in this land. That's why they call me <clears throat> African-American. But, Brother Darrell, you white, you're just American. That's what they tell you. Go fill out an application, a gun, or do anything, see what they do. One day I started to check other. You know who I am. I know I am 
in the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they're clearly telling you where you're from when they call you an African American. Why can't they call you African American, Brother Daryl? Because you're American. And if you're from this land, they say you are <clears throat> Native American. All these designations. You are a Hispanic American. This is what the, the people who put us in captivity, this is how they talk. Now we're coming to the knowledge of self. We come out of her. We got to teach these people how to be like Israelites. No, I don't give a damn about your Black History Month. You should be pissed off. You got the shortest months out of 12 in the whole damn year, calendar year anyway. 28 days out of the month, they give you out of, you, you out of your cotton picking mind, and you think you got some type of honor and respect. <laughs> Nigga, please. You want to protest something, protest that. King done set y'all up. You all right? You all right? Y'all right? <laughs> and I contended with them <clears throat> and cursed them. I like Nehemiah. He said, I got in the face of the aged, the ancients of Israel, the ones who's supposed to be leading this thing. I contended with them and I cursed them and smote certain of them. Nehemiah, Nehemiah was a lay of hands on the people. <laughs> type of guy. And he wasn't talking about getting no oil either. He was some of these laying the hands on. Every time you turn around, he's telling people flat out, come to this gate again. <laughs> I'm going to lay hands on you. Come to this gate again on the Sabbath day and see on I lay hands on you. Right. You can respect a man like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Especially if you know how to fight too. I fight anybody, but I ain't gonna get in the ring with Floyd Mayweather. I can throw twenty punches, man, and as good as he is on defense, man, I'll be swinging it ass. He be putting knots upside my head. I'd have to break down and break the rules, start kicking. <laughs> and yeah, I did. And then I have to go run by the ring and get the 45 and start shooting. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but it, everybody say, well, that was not Nehemiah an Israelite. So don't tell me that those of us that are passionate like this, we got it wrong. We don't have it wrong. No, sir. No, sir. He's mad because of the transgression of the law. He's jealous for Yah, just like the apostle Saul was. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I guarantee you when Yah see that, you get to the king, he'll say, he'll say, good job, son. Good job. Uh-oh. He plucked off their hair. <laughs> and made them swear by Yahweh. I mean, I hear you. <laughs> That's passion right there. Huh? You shall not give your daughters until this. So can you imagine being forced to say it? Say it. Say it. <laughs> huh? I bet, I bet Yahweh was sitting up there looking at Gabriel and Uriah and said, look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. That is what I'm talking about. Huh? I mean, we're going to see Yah in the kingdom, right? You're going to see Jesus, right? See the Messiah? Man, I can't wait to meet my brothers too, though. Oh, boy. I would say, come on, then tell me about it. <laughs> That you should not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his Yah. And Yahweh made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, 
even him did outlandish women cause to sin. If they ain't in this, keeping the commandments and the covenant. You remember, how many times I told y'all, don't you be trying to go out here, convert one of these Gentiles and think you got an Israelite. I'm sure they say, oh, I'll be Israel. And you're like, oh, oh God. <laughs> oh. Y'all young men better listen. Y'all know how to listen. We'll, we'll, we'll go and find us some salt peter somewhere. We'll get you to listen. <laughs> Most of the people don't even know, they don't even know what salt peter is. <laughs> I don't know what salt peter is. <laughs> we wouldn't have to never worry about a sodomite or nothing <laughs> shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil in other words Nehemiah said should we follow your example should we look at you since you already married ask Dodd's children I mean daughters and everything else to do this great evil and to transgress against our Yah and marrying strange wives. Again, Ruth, Naomi, y'all get this? You want to come over from another nation, be Israel, you have to renounce your old nation. You have to renounce. You have to repent from all the accursed things you were part of. You have to make an oath to the King of glory. And keep the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. And then you have to walk in this way all the days of your life. And then when you have children from one of the natives of Israel, you have to teach them Yah's ways. And you know what? We're in a time now that the Bible already, Paul called it. He says, he's going to have Gentiles coming in that's going to provoke you Israelites to jealousy. And what you think, the reason why some of these, these, these black folks out here who claim to be Israelites get mad at your white folks. Because y'all provoking them to jealousy. That's right. Or them white messianics out there, they can't stand the black folks who know who they are. Because provoke the jealousy. Either way it go, they're getting provoked to jealousy. Anytime somebody's speaking evil against you when you meet in y'all's condition, it's all envy. It's all envy. They're going to be thrust outside of the kingdom where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you're going to be sitting down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Glory to the king. Israel, these people today are too far into the world. And too far in transgression. And some of you still got too much of that in your minds. That's why you can't be happy. The reprobate mind has set in. The word of the hour for us is, come out of her, my people. Y'all hear that? It's come out. You, you read it, you see it in the scriptures, and you see it in the renewed covenant. They were told not to go in them. They went in them. We're in them, and we're told to get out. The message. See, the, the problem is, is that when you change the message, you change the people. Uh, and that's why the people, a bunch of wet noodles today. Because they didn't change the message. I ain't changing the message. I'm going to magnify the law. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not breaching. I'm not going to the left or to the right. Oh, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with the book. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? But Yahweh is having mercy upon the house of Judah. This is why I'm here today. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew I'm an Israelite, and it's my job to teach the nations. I also showed them all the scriptures where it showed us in, in, in the scriptures where we are commanded to teach the nations. You don't think they was sitting there happy to hear all that? And we, we covered all that even while we was listening to you. Amazing, huh? Yahweh, love and compassion for his people is immeasurable. You can't measure it. He loves us. 
Hosea 1 7 but I will have mercy upon the house of who Judah and will save them by Yahweh their Elohim now notice he gonna save them by who won't be by no power no might no sword no -uh. and then look at this all this took place this was a prophecy and then it came to pass and I will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, nor by horses, nor by horses, or by nor by horsemen. The Assyrians, after they destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel, they came against the southern kingdom of Judah, Hezekiah. All right. Isaiah told Hezekiah, "Look at this. You do not have to fight this battle. The battle is Yahweh." Now, see, in ancient times, because, you know, the cities used to be built up, fortified with walls. But I mean, walls ain't going to help you today. You know, walls ain't going to help you. Digging 20 feet in the ground ain't going to help you either. They got bunker busters. And they got planes today. You know, because it ain't going to help you. Our safety is under his shadow. You understand that? All right. So. The way that the Syrians would do is, first thing they would do is they'd go surround the walls of the city. And, the, and one of the rules of war they would do back then is starve the people. You ain't going to come in. If you go out, we're going to kill you. So the people would set in, and, and next thing you know, hey, a city can go to poop real quick. And I do mean literal poop real quick. And disease can set in. Uh -huh. It got so bad that many, many times in history that they would just... They had to throw the dead bodies over the wall. Can you imagine throwing a dead body of your mom and daddy over the wall? Because if you don't and you let them keep piling up, disease is going to come in the city and it's going to kill all of you and the children. You got choices, hard choices and decisions to make. People die in sieges. And this is the way the Assyrians were fighting in battle. We'll get into it, show you. Yahweh is the one who's going to do the destroying of the Assyrians. We're not going to lift a finger just like in this end time. We don't have to fight against these nations. Y'all are going to fight against them for us. He already told us. He told us clearly, even the renewed cut, vengeance is mine. I will repay. You got a place prepared for you in the wilderness, so start getting your ass right so you can get there. And how you going to get there, y'all was going to put you there. Can he do it? Yes, sir. He did it before. He can do it again. Oh, hallelujah. You remember the experience with the Ethiopian? The eunuch? He translated Philip, didn't he? Pop, pop, pow. So how is he going to have a difficult time? I know because you ain't seen it, right? Ain't that called cognitive dissonance? I ain't never seen it. Hey, man, don't you know we're in an inflationary depression? I ain't never been in one. Now you're normal, dummy, and you're biased in your normality. Is that a word? It is a word. Since when did you become a dictionary? It is a word, though. Well, thank you, man. I'm getting smarter. But y'all was the one going to destroy the Assyrians. Hey, check this out. Look at what these people today say and how they speak against. Let me use me as an example. Same thing of old, nothing new under the sun. Let's watch the book, 2 Kings 18, 29. Thus said the king, let not Hezekiah deceive you. This is the Assyrians. We're sieging all, all of the kingdom, the southern kingdom. And this king is saying, don't let Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you to trust in Yahweh. Saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Don't listen to him. He's deceiving you. And, of course, when you're sieged, your food rations is running low. No water is coming in. You keep hearing words like this, all of a sudden your weak mind starts to play games. Yeah, I think he's right. Yeah, I think he's right. That's why I tell you, Israelites out there, let me handle all these wicked people out there. Some of the elders. 
don't y'all get out there on that social media uh, uh, social media stuff and, and argue and fuss and fight with these whores like Kathy Smith? Don't do that. And you men that get out there and get entangled with this stuff, all you want to do is hear some gossip and slander and tail bearing. You got some damn problems. You a sissy. You, the Bible don't warn men about tail bearing and slander. Go look at it again. Busy bodies running from house to house. Silly women laden with sin. But we got this transgender society too, though. Men too busy working. Y'all all right? Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus said the king of Assyria, make an agreement with me, buy a present, and come out to me. And then eat you every man of his own vine and of his own fig tree. He's pouring it on, isn't he? And drinking every one of the water of his sisters. All you got to do is come on out to me. Leave the walls, come on over to my side. Ain't that what they do when they offer you food stamps? Social Security. Just come on over to me. See, right now we're not being sieged, but you need to know it. I, I was driving down the road today and said, man, I wonder if I can get some food stamps. <laughs> I need to try to figure out something how I can get some food stamps. Because you know how many canned goods I can buy with food stamps? That'd be nice to get two, three thousand dollars worth of food stamps, wouldn't it? I'd buy so much food. And store it up. Take everything out of the system. In this siege right here, this king is making a <clears throat> plea in your ear. Because you have to understand, these conditions are pretty deplorable right now. And once your belly starts getting hungry, your mind starts playing tricks. Yes, it does. Look how your mind tr tries to play tricks on you when you're fasting. How many times you ever fast and, and then, then, then your mind comes up with an excuse? Oh, you can go ahead and cut a little bit short here, right? Yeah, I'm the only one that this spirit, people's spirit talking about. Oh, I cut a little bit short right here. Oh, you feel a little bit of pain? Oh, oh, you better go ahead and get some. No, no. Up, up, up. Look at that. Hey, I know you. I know the scripture says these probably get weak, but hey, you're a little bit too weak. Y'all will understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, come on, I know your flesh talk to you like that. Yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, or sometimes you gritting your teeth to keep from transgressing too. Ain't it right? To keep your vow. So if you ain't accustomed to fast, and guess what? You're going to kill every Israelite in the camp in order to, to meet the conditions of the Assyrians. Especially if you don't trust in Yahweh. The prophet said that Yahweh was going to deliver you. But he's going to, guess what? Test you and see how long you're going to continue to keep holding out on your resolve. Huh? At least one thing I learned about these people that they did trust in Yahweh. Huh? Because the one thing that could have killed them, forget about the Assyrians, just start murmuring. Just start griping and complaining while we're under siege. That'll raise up an insurrection. Wouldn't it do it? That'll tap the camp. That's the reason why they were sending them felices over the wall and stuff. Don't believe what Hezekiah's saying. Look at what you in. I, I, I can give you, hey, I'll give you some Pizza Hut. You ain't got to worry about the apple cider vinegar. I will give you the apple from the tree itself. You can make your own cider. Huh? He, he going to make, hey, the, the enemy is going to make conditions look pretty pleasing. Oh, man, let me get going. This is scripture study. Man. Shoot, I'm up here preaching, man. Come on now. And he said, get the drink water out of your own sister until I come and take you away to the land like your own land. A land of corn and a wine and a bread and a vineyards. And not only he's talking about, not only that, I'm going I'm to I'm deliver you, but I'm going to take you to a land. Your eyes all goo-goo because you ain't, hey, that's, that belly is hitting that spine right now. Because that belly goes in before it goes out. 
He making it look real good. You don't even mind going into captivity like this after being under siege. And the land of olive oil and of honey that you may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuaded you saying Yahweh would deliver us. Hezekiah holding on. All it takes is one voice. That's all it takes. That's why I often say, I ain't got to worry about it. I ain't got to worry about it. If we in the wilderness, we get one of y'all to rise up, I'll put a bullet through your head in, in a heartbeat. Boom! Y'all know what happened. We put away the evil. You got to worry about that one. I got to preserve Israel. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his, his hand, land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He's, that's pretty force. It's a lot of force and power and might, isn't it? America is saying the same thing today, especially with his religion of Christianity. But people just refuse to see it. I told you, we're the greatest military might has ever hit the face of planet Earth. One morning, Judah got up and looked over the wall, and the angel of the Most High had passed through the land of Samir, of some uh, of the land outside the gate and smote all the Assyrians. Few little here and there enough to run back, tuck tail and run, so they could go back and get the message. But y'all did this. One hundred eighty-five thousand men in one evening. Only left a few to run back to go tell it. And you didn't have to lift a finger. And then you know what you could have did then? You could have just went on out there and took all their provisions. Hosea 1 7, but I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and I will save them by. And they were saved by Yahweh. Their Elohim. And will not save them by bow, by no, by sword, by battle, by horse, or by horsemen. Judah was saved because of Yahweh's mercy. But Israel, mercy ran out. Isaiah 10, 24, Therefore thus saith Yahweh Elohim the host, O my people that dwell us in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians. He shall smite thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. Isaiah 30, 31, For though uh, the voice, or through the voice, Although the voice of Yahweh sh shall the through the voice of Yahweh, excuse me, shall the Assyrians be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Isaiah fifty two four. For thus saith uh, Yahweh Elohim, my people went down a four time into Mizraim to sojourn there, and the Assyrians oppressed them without what cause. Don't it sound like a blueprint of America? Sure did. America is just like the ancient Assyrians. Just like I'm a spitting image. That's why we need to get back to Torah. We have to restore this law, Israel. And that's our defense. Read Dabarim 30 and it'll tell you that. Hosea 1 9. And then said Yahweh called his name Loami. Watch this. Loami, for ye are not my people. Why? Because even though that's Hosea's wife, that's somebody else's son inside of her belly. Even though we say we married to Yah, we got somebody else's, uh-oh, in our hearts. Mm. And Yah was showing through the prophets, he see. Understand this, saints. Yah was said to the people, then after having much mercy, you are not my people. Today, the people are very in very serious deception. It's a reprobate mind. Romans 1, 28. Look at this. <clears throat> Even as they did not like to retain Yah in knowledge. And I'll show you how you do this. You never study. You never pray. You, you don't, you're not interested in conforming to his image because to read his word and to get it in your heart means that your will will stop ceasing. And you will end up functioning just like him. They did not like to retain y'all in knowledge. So guess what? Since you reject knowledge, it goes to y'all say, y'all say I gave them over to a what? Now let's let the script, let's let the text right here define what a reprobate mind is, okay? Look what a reprobate mind does. To do those things which are not convenient. 
What are those things that a reprobate mind does? Can y'all can I ask that question? What are those things that a reprobate mind does? Is that that's a good question, isn't it? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of that's what reprobate mind does. Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and that's what a reprobate mind does. It, don't y'all want to know what a reprobate mind does? And some of you have been guilty of it. Been guilty of a reprobate mind. Ooh. Yeah, some of you. You want is defining it? Backbiters. Haters of Yah. A reprobate mind is also despiteful. Proud, bolsters. Look what else a reprobate mind does. Inventors of evil things. A reprobate mind is also disobedient to. That's what a reprobate mind is. Why? Because they did not like to retain y'all in their knowledge. So y'all gave them over a reprobate mind. So these people, when they do these things, they believe they're right. That's why, that's why that whore, Kathy Smith, keep doing what she's doing. And that they have husband continue to let her do it because they are turned over to a reprobate mind. Do y'all understand? Yes, are y'all getting this? Yes, they doing these things that are not convenient. Now they can't help it. It's part of their nature. And y'all ain't trying to change their mind either. He just going to have judgment for them. Yes, Nothing but condemnation. Y'all getting this? Yes, Who they bringing to Christ? I guess what they preach in this gospel. Uh oh. Y'all getting this? What about the whispers? What about the pride? The boasters. All this reprobate mind. You ought to make sure there's not none of you. Without understanding. Look what else they do. They covenant breakers. Look, they are without. They are implacable and unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of Yah, they can tell you better than you can. Huh? That they which commit such things are worthy of what? Not only do the same, but have. Go look for their coup. And them that do them. That's the reprobate mind. So you see, y'all had turned around, and we, we do have hope. Huh? Even in that whole first chapter right there, y'all did not, he, he left us with a future hope. Y'all, I'm going to read you two verses, and we done, all right? Hosea 1, verse, uh, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, look. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Hear that? which cannot be measured nor numbered and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people where was that said at? in Jezreel there it shall be said unto them ye are the sons of a living Yah see the place, same place where he said you wasn't now you're going to turn around and say okay now you are the sons of the living Yah same place Watch this. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. Going to be no more two divided kingdoms. One kingdom. And appoint themselves one head, Yahshua HaMashiach. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Isn't that beautiful? Way down in the future, he already called that he's going to gather his people. Say we're going to be scattered as a number of the sands of the sea. Can't measure, but he's going to gather. Isn't that good hope? After all that history and spanking our people because they deserve it, he has a plan of redemption for us. Is that not all right? Didn't mean to be long-winded tonight. Uh, scripture study night. Let us stand. Hosea, you know, these prophets, 
is, is, is um, it's, it's a whole lot bigger than what we, I mean, they really truly are. And, and Hosea is not a big book at all. It's not a big book at all. And I'm telling you, it's, I mean, it's, it's just so much in here that can show us where we are, where we need to be going, and what we need to be doing. But I can't sanctify you. I can only give you the word. You, it's up to you to obey the Father. Hallelujah. Abba y'all, we thank you for all things. We thank you for your words of truth. Pray these sins. Encourage the hearts of your set apart people, be they here or scattered abroad. Encourage their hearts, Father. In the mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, help us to drive on and to defeat this enemy. We thank you for your truth that is transforming us and giving us a mighty understanding. We bless you for all things. Thank you for the blood of Yahshua. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Shalom, King coming. Y'all be encouraged.